Three, two, one. My name is Adam Johnston, and I graduated from one of Canada's top movie schools with really good grades. Now I'm using my knowledge to help struggling co-hosts make it in this competitive world. This is Sardonic Cast for you. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. I'm Ralph from YouTube.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. And I'm Alex from IHE, and we are joined by a very, very special guest, Sir Dunkles himself. Hey, it's Please me, introduce. Angry Joe. <laughs> Ooh, oh nice. no! <laughs> what an honor! What have you done with Sir Dunkles? Oh shit. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's me, Angry Joe. I'm on here. Sound a bit different. So, uh, <laughs> tell us, tell us about, uh, tell us about your ch your channel, your uh, Angry Joe reviews. Well, you know, me and the boys, we like to uh, like to do some video game goofs, <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. uh, make some jokes about some games. Mm -hmm. I was playing this great game, Death Stranding. You guys would really love that. I'm like, I, I think I'm halfway through that game, but I'm not sure. I've done about 15 <laughs> hours. I think I'm on chapter hours? four. Yeah, you're about, you're about done with the first uh, part. Yeah. Of 18 parts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I feel like I've committed myself too much. Like, I, I, I need to make it to the end. And I only play these games like once a week, so it's going to be a while. Oh. I haven't yeah. played it, but I'm excited to. What do you do in the game? Uh, uh, your postman. You work for Jeff yeah, Bezos. Walk around. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. What else? Um, that's it. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Memes aside, uh, I've always, I've always really appreciated your, um, your really fast-paced editing on your channel. I've, I've always really valued the idea of like cutting out the fat, and that's kind of been incorporated into my editing style as well. It's very marketable. And I like your content yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank I do you as so well. Much. My brother does too. He got me a donkey shirt for Christmas. Oh, shit. <laughs> People are showing me that. <laughs> Thank you. So we have, we'll, we'll have some uh, dunk, donkey ish questions kind of near the end when we go into uh, question time. Uh, we've got a few topics that we're going to discuss here. Um, so we're going to try and get through those. The, uh, the new Sonic trailer came out and uh they fixed him they fixed it after 30 million more dollars yeah People they fixed the whole movie this. yeah the jokes were slightly better like the editing was faster paced and it just looked like a better movie mm -hmm. in every way this new trailer and i don't know if it was intentional or not to make it seem better than it actually is the th the thing is like they not only learned from the mistakes of the character design, which was everybody's like major problem with it. But they also learned in terms of like marketing a trailer. They didn't do the gangster's Paris paradise. I almost said gangster's <laughs> parasite. Um, you know, like they, they seem to have had a better judgment for what the trailer should look like. It's still not going to be good. I don't think it looks like a good movie at all. Definitely yeah, not my thing. The contrast is what is making it stand out. It's like yeah. th that first trailer yeah. was so so abysmal like th that's the only reason anyone was talking about this movie to begin with like it it looks so bad to me that it was actually interesting now it just looks like well, i guess that's just gonna be a sonic the hedgehog movie then like for kids <laughs> it looks like the pikachu one did they recast uh jim carrey no <laughs> no he's, he's still, still in it, in it? okay <laughs> the perfect like eggman with jim carrey being eggman <laughs> what if they never even had him and they just recast him <laughs> yeah they only brought him in for the trailer. There's a bunch of people online saying, like, that they're legitimately convinced that it's a conspiracy that yeah. the studio <laughs> planned this from the beginning. Some marketing stunt. As if, as if they would be, as if <laughs> that would be a too thing. Too much credit, man. That would be a genius marketing. It'd be too, stunt, yeah, it's I'm not too convinced. intelligent of a too plan. Ingenious. Like, too ingenious. They're not. They're not clever enough for that. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. There's there's too many people and too much red tape behind that sort of thing <laughs> for that to be. <laughs> An actual marketing and campaign. You could expect it from like an individual operating like the Wendy's Twitter account or something, but not like yeah. the entire marketing campaign for a film. That's that's not realistic. Yeah, it's it's risky, but it could be done, and I think that's what they did. Maybe they'll have like a like a special Blu-ray release where you can get the original. <laughs> I, they're not the, going to do the that. whole movie I with that original model. Would. Oh my I god, that would be so good. Do that. I always thought that it would be awesome. 
for like every movie that uses a lot of like computer generated es- effects and green screen shit. I-, I always thought it would be awesome if they as a special feature released a cut of the movie without any effects and it was just a bunch of actors <laughs> running around in the green screen. <laughs> Cuz like there's a lot of animation studios in uh, Vancouver. Uh, a lot of movie making happens here and I've got some friends in some industries and they've let me walk around in the studios and I signed some NDAs. So I won't say which studios, but watching the footage <laughs> of of like these major movies where where the actors are just like running around in a green screen room pretending to be like <laughs> scared mm-hmm. by things is just so funny to me and I wish that I could just see a cut of the movie but I don't think they'll ever do that because it just like it it almost exposes it <laughs> you know they kind yeah, of did something it. like that with uh Devil May Cry 5 oh yeah there's like an option where you could you could like select to watch the cutscenes and I mean, it's a video game. It's all 3D, but then you could watch like people just pretending to make the cutscenes with like cardboard boxes and what? like action figures and oh, shit. Oh, so, like the most awesome. versions, or yeah, they're like, okay, how are we gonna how are we gonna do, make them do the backflip? And then it's just like a Japanese man doing backflips with like a little action figure <laughs> oh, wow. on a stick. So like like Shrek it's retold like reference style. Mission. <laughs> it's pretty much yeah. It's amazing. It really is amazing. <laughs> they should just do that with all movies. Yeah. <laughs> Especially. But the if Sonic you release movie. that, if you release that footage like that with all the green screen in there, people would just add their own shit in. But that would be, be so great. good. Oh yes, yeah, for us culture. it would be great. But I can imagine studios don't want that. It's the modding community. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah know. they don't want it's this some, stuff. Sometimes modded. it's that sort of thing that will modded. propel the success of a product. You know, like Star oh, Wars yeah. wouldn't be nearly as as much of a cultural uh, cultural phenomenon as it is today if George Lucas was like super pissy about copyright and you know he he always mm-hmm. let people. You mean like Disney is material. now? Yeah, like yeah. Disney people is now. People own Star Wars, but like yeah, yeah, you hear they don't even like the Star Wars fan base. You hear basically. about all these uh, <laughs> like directors and and artists that made like Star Wars parodies. And they're like, yeah, George Lucas didn't even charge us for licensing for the song. He was like, yeah, whatever, right? Like he he was totally on board with people remixing his work, which, you know, as much as you can hate the guy for a lot of other shit he does, that's one thing that I respect. Yeah, yeah. He, he was Absolutely. like always anti-establishment, kind of like fuck the system, kind of thing. Like he would made he like independently almost funded so empire by himself mm-hmm. from like the profits of the first movie. Like he he's not an idiot. And he kind mm-hmm. of gets the craft a bit more than like a suit would mm-hmm. at Disney, for he example. He likes to edit his own stuff too. He likes to remix <laughs> his, own, his own shit. So. Yeah, like he seems to be right on board with it. Mm-hmm. Um, back to back to Sonic, I guess. I'm kind of disappointed by the fact that they changed the design at all. Like it is refreshing yeah, same. for for people to feel as though their concerns are being met. Uh, <clears throat> whether that's a slippery slope or not, I guess we'll decide. It's almost like the trailer was like a test screening. But part of me feels <laughs> as though mm-hmm. the movie would have more meme potential with the original design. Like, yeah, 100%. The Emoji movie was incredibly successful, and that was just because people saw mm-hmm. it ironically. So I don't know about <laughs> that. I think it's because stupid <laughs> kids. Yeah, mostly stupid kids. Ninety nine point nine percent stupid kids, mm. and then like Alex saw it ironically. <laughs> the internet is a direct reflection all of real in life. The yeah, all adults I, in the emoji movie. Theater. I thought that Twitter was the real stupid. world. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. It's not a single kid in the theater. <laughs> you yeah, never want to see that crap. <laughs> I didn't watch it. How do we actually feel about Sonic, though, as a character? Do we care? Are any of us, uh, like, fans? What is his character? He's fast and he eats chili dogs? <laughs> He's blue. No, there's more to it than that. Oh, go on. Please tell us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's blue. Oh, yeah. And the blue symbolizes his sadness. <laughs> sure. But wasn't he around because Sega needed, like, their own mascot? They just yeah. wanted to copy Nintendo. He so was supposed like, to be the Sonic. edge, the edgier one than Mario. Ah, oh, okay. He's supposed to be cooler than Mario because he has sneakers. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, Mario's like an old Italian plumber. He's not cool. Yeah, he's not cool. He's such a '90s leftover for me. Hmm. Oh, okay. That'll be the true test to see if this how this stacks up to the Mario movie. <laughs> <laughs> the original yeah. one with um Bob yeah. Hopkins. I guess he and, couldn't. Uh, well, I mean, like that's a product of its time but i mean 
I guess I guess he couldn't really make like a current version of Mario movie in the same way that you could a Sonic movie right now. Like, no one would want to see that. They're making a Mario movie though. Are they? they? I think it's coming out next year. What? Yeah, Illuminations making. Oh it. no! Yeah, it's animated. Oh no! Yeah. Did you tell That's me about the way this it before? should be though? At least it's animated. It'll be <laughs> no, stupid. No, it's Illumination, but... Ralph. Sure, but at least it's not live action. Like that that old Mario movie was like a nightmare to watch. It's like all brown, and they're like lizards. <laughs> it's fucking scary. I like Nightmare movie is inspired by Blade Runner, wasn't it? Was yeah, it was like Blade channel. Runner. Though. I was like, why? <laughs> Weird. I guess I have to watch that. Oh, oh totally. We the should Yoshi's recommend it on this show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Yoshi, have you seen the cool Have you seen the or... the clip of uh, It's on YouTube. It's like Yoshi's voice slowed down, and it just sounds like a regular <laughs> yeah. Japanese guy. It's just a guy. Yoshi. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's Yoshi. <laughs> They're not even Italian. <laughs> Just a freaking dude in the head working in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say Yoshi. Ow, wow, 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 wow. Ow, wow, wow, wow. That's a good one. All right, we're going to use that for the next 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, someone, if someone took that clip of me saying that right now and sped it up, you'd have Yoshi. <laughs> Identical. Nintendo would do it. Copyright that shit now. Uh-oh. It's like those... Uh, there's like chipmunk CDs where you slow it down and it's just like three dudes. <laughs> just, just, oh, yeah. yeah. Is that the same thing? What do you mean? That's messed yeah. up. It's, it, <laughs> oh, it was like man, a crazy new thing at one point where you could speed up people's voices and then just have them like a small character. Like nobody knew how oh. it was done. You ruined the illusion. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I, I do. That was chipmunk. <laughs> so they're real. <laughs> I didn't connect the dots with the Yoshi. Mm. That, is, that is all they did. They just did the Yoshi trick. <laughs> yeah. Anything else to say about the Sonic trailer? Or we pretty much covered that. No. It looks Rules better than it did before, it. but it won't be good. I hope yeah. stupid kids enjoy it. Like, they didn't rewrite the movie, <laughs> as far as we know. Yeah. Like, all the bad <laughs> shit we saw in trailer one is still going to be in there, just a different design. They might have removed all that. Hmm. They, I told you, they just shot that stuff for the fake trailer they were going to make so they could make a good a, a good real trailer oh, yeah. later on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think we should start a revolt and see if they'll go back. The see how many times side. we can oh, get them God. to go back. Yeah, yeah spend another <laughs> 30 million. Really they deleted all the original <laughs> source files. Like... How many times can we get them to change the model? We'll have like 10 trailers <laughs> of yeah. different Sonic mm -hmm. models. Okay. And there will be a point where you could just go to Sonic which theater you want. You can pick the theater you want to see the... Yeah, we want a pink Sonic. Yeah, different theaters you. will show different versions of the movie. Yeah, I want to have five different Sonic versions that I could go and see in a theater. And I'll marathon just them. awful. In one day. And I'll let everybody know which one is the superior Sonic. But that's what it's about now. It's not about making art or having your own vision. Oh my god. You just have to hear what the audience wants and then just do that. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of sad. There's this... I, I found this on Twitter. Uh, I think uh, David Sandberg retweeted a, a thread about this. There's a movie from 2004. It's listed on IMDb as a, a very cool Christmas. But it was also released as too cool for Christmas. And it has the most bonkers trivia <laughs> that, that you have ever seen and that I'm going to read okay. to you right now and it's related to what we were just talking about. There are two versions of the film. The one that uh, that features a homosexual character and the one that doesn't. In the one called oh, yeah. Too Cool for Christmas, Lindsay's parents are actually a gay couple. In the version called A Very Cool Christmas, Lindsay's parents are a heterosexual couple. What? Barclay <laughs> Hope wow. plays her dad in both versions while Adam Harrington plays the other dad and Hope's husband in the first version and Ingrid Torrance plays her mom and Hope's wife in the second version. Other than the gender of the actor that plays the other parent, the two versions of the film are virtually identical with identical lines being delivered by both the actor and the actress and exact same camera shots being used for their scenes in both versions versions as if the two versions of the film were shot at the same time yeah it's like they just swapped out the actor for the tape mm -hmm. it's like okay you said it and then they brought in the gay actor one for the it's more crazy. tolerant canadian audience and the other for the presumably more conservative u.s audience at the time <laughs> <laughs> the conservative u.s audience like we couldn't handle it i That's don't know great. that's one of the true masterpieces though yeah <laughs> that and sonic it's are the gonna start. redefine how movies are shot yeah, mm -hmm. we need we need alternate versions. We need DLC in movies, is what we need. 
Uh, that's that's what like sequels are. Yeah, right? basically. Yeah, in a sense, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. They've tried their best to like monetize every aspect of cinema, though, haven't they? 3D. You got like they st- in the UK they started like splitting up the sections of the cinema into like yeah now the seats at the back are premium so they're a few quid more. Do you guys have so, D box? Yeah, really? It's gonna end. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. It's so lame. I do. <laughs> it's so lame. D box. Is that the one where your chair kind of moves around? Yeah, you got you got like yeah. a fucking vibrating moving chair <laughs> where it's like you know you know there's like amusement park rides where where like. There's this screen and it's like, oh wow, you're really thr- flying through oh, yeah, this jungle yeah. or something. It's like that, but regular movies. And so there are there are certain movies <laughs> where they basically have like the studio will pay like a certain amount to get it translated into D box code. And yeah, so like a lot of popular movies action like movies that. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So like The Dark Knight Rises, I watched in D box. It was the most distracting fucking thing in the world. It was like, yeah. At some points, it was kind of cool. You'd see like a shot of a, a a motorbike going like swaying from side to side, and your chair would sway from side to side. It's like, oh, that feels kind of cool. But then in the action scenes, it's like someone gets punched, and your chair kind of just jolts to the side. And it's like, what <laughs> what perspective am I watching this from? Am I the man being punched? And it, yeah. it just totally takes you out of the movie, and it's so bad. And you pay extra it's for like it. It's like a rumble pick. So yeah, exactly. they put the rumble pick in a control. Oh fuck, I miss rumble picks. <laughs> I saw they did one where they blow air at you. Oh, but like a the theme park thing, right? Air Not like a real movie <laughs> thing, right? Ah, uh, like fan. Maybe. Yeah, it was like called 4D movie. That's probably is a theme park. Thing, yeah, right? like if you oh, go yeah. to Disney there's World, like Shrek 4D, 4D shit like that. Spy Kids 4D. Wait, oh, the, that's that 4D. You have to like and scratch and sniff the card. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> terrible. If oh, no. you've got to do 4D, it's got to be a theater made for it, where they, like, pump sense into the theater. That's usually only at amusement parks. Yeah. It's a lot of The money. Shining 4D, yeah. where Jack Nicholson bursts through the door <laughs> with an axe. <laughs> you yeah. gotta run away. And, like, <laughs> or else when the kill blood you. comes out of the elevator, they spray, like, water at you. Mm-hmm. So wait, in the D box one, does everybody see in the whole theater move? No, it's like just, some it's like a not. section near the back. You would just be like hearing that, like in the mo- you would just be hearing people go. Oh, yeah, you're what too the fuck? close yeah. to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's really like it, it, there's there's this. Scorsese's kind of right when he said that movies are kind of being turned into like amusement park rides or what it, whatever he said. Mm. You know, <laughs> like the same yeah. general idea. You know, a lot of pe- I, I guess a lot of people go to movies for different reasons, but yeah, we were saying another episode that like the film festival experience is one of the best ones you can have because everybody's there to watch the movie not to kill time yeah or get to second base yeah they're respectful (laughs) they know the rules they don't take out their phone no d-box no d-box no d-box though there with fucking seats shaking scratch and sniff (laughs) yeah yeah you can't you can't watch the lighthouse in (laughs) d-box oh no it's bad i want to see like a drama in d-box yeah, what the fuck? It's I would like love no to action. see that. Like Barry Lyndon, ironically, the Barry Lyndon three hours. Yeah. for a dream in D box. You have cancer. See, that one's like that one would actually be cool. That it could work, but I want like a really slow movie. I want like G- Gene mm. Delman in D box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like three and a half hours of a woman cleaning her house in D box. That would be epic. <laughs> when she like wipes the plates. Your, oh your yeah, seat, like sway. You can be in the perspective of the plate. You can feel yeah. like you're being washed. <laughs> you can feel like you're the meatloaf. She's making in the oven, yeah, yeah, and your seat heats up when she throws it in. <laughs> I mean, it sounds stupid, but that's what they're doing, basically. Yeah, that's what yeah, Hollywood is now. We're exaggerating, but it's also true. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's a sad part. So we all watched a really great movie in theaters, uh, called Parasite, by Jun Ho Bong, my favorite Bong. What did you guys think? Uh, well, I just said it was great, but don't I, I don't I'm not trying to influence your yeah, don't speak thoughts on the movie. But uh what did you guys think? It's brilliant. Well, yeah. I saw it in D box and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you hate it, Ralph? What's your problem? Oh, I hated it, yeah. So <laughs> what is it? Everyone rated this movie ten stars? And it's I the highest, it, it's the highest yeah. rated movie on Letterboxd. It's moment. the best movie of all time. And I'm just saying, like, yeah, I gave it like a four out of five. It's really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, and so like, you hated it. Yeah, I hated it. But this film is excellent in so many ways. It looks beautiful. The acting and the depiction of like this 
cartoonish but very likable, relatable family, both of them. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. And it was just really clever. I thought it was great. It was clever, yeah. Because yeah. I I don't watch trailers anymore, so I had no idea what the film was about Great. when I went in. But I didn't know the title, obviously. You watched so the Sonic like trailer. Theorizing in my head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't resist Sonic, but I was like can't going through it. my head. What parasite? Is this going to be like Contagion or something and be about like a literal parasite? It's a weird title for what it is, but it still makes sense. No, but but it makes I sense. think it yeah. turned into something a lot more clever to me with mm -hmm. the. What, are we talking about spoilers? Uh, let's yet, give a or? spoiler warning right now. Spoiler warning for Parasite. Uh, you should all be able to see it no matter where you are at this point. You should be able to see it. So go watch it. It's great. Spoiler warning. Go for well, it. Yeah, there, there are certain ways in the UK that I won't condone. But yeah, the the name is a, 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 suggests what the you know the characters do in the movie and are really you say like exaggerated and like the acting and the pre presentation is, but the the way the like parasitic title is integrated into the story like slowly but surely i thought was really clever and the mm -hmm. way it kind of represented the the sort of class warfare that this director seems to be really interested in because it, it reminded me sort of thematically of um snowpiercer a little bit um but in a much more interesting narrative framework for me mm -hmm. yeah it was also like Okja in that it was presented very friendly. It has like a very shiny veneer, but yeah. what goes on is actually really fucked up. And the end of the film is like really disturbing and crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's really exactly. violent. Um, I enjoyed that aspect of it. Yeah, it's um, it's one of many examples of great Korean directors being able to meld several genres at once together. Mm hmm and uh -huh. not taking away from anything that it's trying to accomplish. So the humor doesn't take away from the seriousness, vice versa. And uh, I think it works really, really well. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen any of uh, Bong's Korean movies, like the ones in the Korean language. Like Snowpiercer and uh, Okja are pretty Mother? popular, but... Is that what it's The host? host, right? Yeah, the, the oh, good yeah, the host, host, yeah. Not the Stephanie yeah, Meyer one. The, <laughs> the one with the... What, I can't say her fucking name. The Saoirse Saoirse Ronan? Ronan? Shorsha Sir, Ronan. Saoirse. She's Irish. Saoirse Ronan. Irish. I didn't even know they remade that movie. What? No, that's a different... No, it's completely different. It's not a remake. Yeah, it's not a remake. It's, oh, it's based on a say, Stephanie I Meyer novel. This. It's like... Yeah. it's like S Stephanie Meyer never saw the host. The main so. conflict is like, how will I kiss two boys at once? <laughs> is literally <laughs> the main conflict. That's, pre that's pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's like we talk about so many movies on here that do have a remake, like yeah. <laughs> that Martyrs remake. So I, I'm just expecting it at this point that every yeah. good movie from like foreign countries. They'll probably is just remake, get a remake this like Parasite. Oh, I'm oh, I, I, right, I wouldn't actually. be fucking surprised. This is like one of the most successful foreign films in terms of like general knowledge of of a theatrical release. Like the mainstream public, to some extent, really likes is like movie. talking about it. Which is yeah, nuts for like a, really, a Korean movie. It's a really entertaining movie. It's like it a, is. It's about as entertaining as like something Quentin Tarantino would put out. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very satisfying. 100%. I've seen it twice. Both screenings, there was applause in the theater <laughs> at the midpoint when he pulls the blood out of the trash can because that was just such a perfect, <laughs> a perfect build up. <laughs> the music and everything just like <laughs> leading towards this climax. And it's just like at that moment, it's like you can tell everybody in the theater is just like loving this movie. I don't yeah, know about you The story had a lot though. of great twists that were just, you never knew where the story was going the entire mm -hmm. time. When they found that mm -hmm. basement, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck is going that, on? That, that <laughs> shit was about to get really, really fucked yeah. up. In the I basement. thought it was like, oh, this movie's like allegorical, right? Because there's no way there's like this fucking creepy basement in this. But they really no, no, found no, a way to not. rationally explain it. I'm like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, they did play the violin stock sound effect at that part, which bothered me. I might have taken away from the score. Um, right. <laughs> but it's this stock sound effect I always complain about, Donkey. It's used in every fucking movie and show. It's this stock violin. Stock violin? No. It's just like this I don't think they crescendo. Use, I, I think, I think <laughs> that there's I, I a lot of um, movies that score violin in the same way to get the emotional reaction. Oh, I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's a stock sound effect, though. <laughs> Depending on the movie, I'm sure like the, st yeah. the stock sound effect surely exists. But I don't think mm -hmm. I, I would be very shocked to find out that like it wasn't actually <laughs> it's the a part of the score sound. for this movie. <laughs> they took the MP3, but it's the same trick I always uh, don't like. Yeah, but that's it's, a minor it's, thing. It's, I thought it, uh, you could call it similar it to really like good. 
soft piano when a character dies sort of thing. Like you, you could call it mm-hmm. similar to that. And I can't it's even not call necessarily it that. like because at least that's like a effect. variance. It's like different notes. This is like the same exact violin it crescendos. The same. <laughs> it's the yeah, same yeah. fucking thing every time. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> it's so cliche. But it's, anyway, oh uh, well, yeah. Something I did like the rich family in like a lesser movie would be totally unlikable. Yeah. But I actually really enjoyed them and yeah. like the mom was she was annoying and overprotective but she was a good mother and you could tell she cared about her kids she wasn't like uh mean or any, like anything really unlikable so oh well, yeah they're almost kind of like oblivious complex. to the whole class warfare thing uh-huh. yeah mm-hmm. it was kind of like the central one of the central themes is that like the rich people don't have to get dirty they don't have to do all this horrible shit these yeah, yeah. people at the bottom have to always get involved in this fucked up shit yeah they're the people that have to do all this horrible stuff meanwhile they're stealing all this food and they don't even notice because these rich people are so oblivious and yeah. up their ass <laughs> that they don't even care the same event will affect different classes of people differently you know like they mm-hmm. they look outside oh it's raining how nice or like oh we had to cancel our yeah. little uh, we were gonna go out and go camping in the woods and have like a nice family get together Oh no! I guess we'll have to go back to our mansion while our uh, maid makes us some delicious food ready for when we get back in like ten fucking minutes. Oh no, poor me! Meanwhile, like the family's literally losing their home, and like all of these yeah. people are are now displaced to this this uh, camp in this like gymnasium where they sleep overnight, and everything's ruined. Mm-hmm. Like their entire mm-hmm. lives are decimated, you know, and they're just oblivious to it. Like they they're not aware of it. Their apartment that like underground has like the window open that yeah. leads into the street. That was a set that they built for the movie. Apparently, the was mansion was a set crazy. too. Crazy. Oh yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, but like incredible. that whole fucking street was a set, and it's because they had to flood it, and they wouldn't be able to flood it like you know course, in, in a yeah. normal apartment complex. So they had to build all that. Yeah, it's a really impressive. It's an incredibly ambitious movie, and it's filmed yeah. very very well. Like you don't see a lot of the same shots being reused it's not like a camera b camera repeat like every shot Mm -hmm. is like a new thing a new perspective and it's purposeful it's very smart the reveal of the basement it would like follow the it was like a tracking shot following them down as they went down the stairs and it just kept going it was really really well done yeah Uh, but it was simple but effective and the because there aren't that many locations in the movie this what three four maybe yeah. But the yeah, the way they present it is so fresh every single time. It doesn't feel repetitive in yeah. the way some of those sort of bottle movies can in that way. It doesn't mm-hmm. overstay its welcome at all. Mm-hmm. It's very fast paced. Because you just get wrapped up in the like drama of the you know the the lies that are slowly going to unfold yeah. and the the tension. Like that that sequence where they have to hide because <laughs> they come home early is is such a great. Oh moment. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hiding under the freaking. <laughs> Little floor yeah. thing, because you know, oh, you dear. know that it's gonna unravel eventually, and you're just waiting to yeah. find out yeah. how it's gonna happen. And when and it they does, start, they start like, having Whoa. sex on the couch. It's like mm-hmm. that. That moment was great because it's like comedic, but also really uncomfortable. You're not sure how to feel. <laughs> yeah, it's a really <laughs> it's great so awesome. setup for conflict, and uh-huh. you know enough about the characters that even though none of them are perfect moral human beings, you actually care about every character in the movie. Like everybody has their own motivations yeah. and, you know, are somewhat justified in what they're doing to some extent. And you can understand. Yeah. Even the guy them. in the basement. Yeah. Who we're introduced to like halfway through the movie. In real life, this would be like a no drama situation. And then in the movie, it's like the most insane shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, exact- this- <laughs> exaggerated to the nth degree. Yeah. Among the uh, 1% on Rotten Tomatoes that gave this a negative review. I think it was three total reviews out of some hundreds. We have our old friend Armand White, who... Uh, there he is. Oh, the master. Yes. Cool. <laughs> who, who, who calls this... The, the title of his article on National Review is Parasite, Antifa Comedy for the Cancel Culture Era. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <Wow. laughs> Antifa Comedy? Really? He, he projects hard, doesn't he? That he guy. does yeah. so hard. That's if like the title of every review he makes. Perfectly align so. with his conservative views. He's like, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Christ. Yeah, I think Armand makes a great point. And in the in in his review, he he calls Okja Okji, 
I don't even think that's corrected yet. <laughs> Oak G. <laughs> like ironically, or he just no. fucked up? He just doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he's just yeah. he's, he's he's convinced that this is just some sort of like property is theft propaganda sort of thing. Like that's it's that's all he gets out of this it. movie. Yeah, right. there's a lot more going on than that. Yeah, a lot more. Bong is an unfunny extremist, he says. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> what did he do? Okay. He made a film. What's extreme? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Donkey, you covered Armin Bight at one point, right? Yeah, he's one of the true one of the true masters of film criticism. Uh, I think so. <laughs> kind of opened my eyes on the uh, Man of Steel trilogy. <laughs> what do you say about that? Well, the Man of Man, well, Man of Steel films are some of the greatest films created. Oh, okay. As you guys mm. know, too. Oh yeah, the um, Zack Snyder. Yeah, Zack Snyder, one of the, one of the great filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you see Justice League? No, I didn't see any of these. Oh. I just saw Man of Steel on TV once, where they were fighting for like a, a half hour. Oh, the, you mean the last half of the movie? Yeah. 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 Mm. I mean, that's basically mm-hmm, that's all that's worth watching. <laughs> I think oh, no, I think I did try to watch Man of Steel, but I turned it off because it started getting really weird and gross. <laughs> like Superman was like screaming and like blood was coming out of him or something. Oh my god! Well, know, there was, was like horrible. a scene. Then the whole city gets to... just annihilated. <laughs> he had to people snap screaming in pain snap. as they're like lifted into the ground and smashed like down. Really brutal. <laughs> yeah, that was not very extreme at all, though. <laughs> Unlike Parasite, which <laughs> yes. is yeah, extremist way over the propaganda. Line. Well, because no excess Bong, there. Yeah. Bong Joon Ho is an extremist. <laughs> He says that Parasite won the Palme d'Or at Cannes Film Festival, which has become a yearly celebration of films that claim progressive anti-American attitudes. Did this film say anything about America, really? I mean, it was kind of an anti-capitalistic message. I mean, some of the symbolism was kind of on the nose with, like, the the layers. Mm -hmm. Like, the lower you go, the shittier stuff gets. You know, the house is, like, up on a hill. And then you go in the basement, there's a weird guy in there, and then you go way down, shit is getting flooded. Hot take, yeah. I believe that you can criticize the negative aspects that have become byproducts of capitalism without necessarily advocating for a different type yep. of uh, economic system, right? Because yeah, like most of the problems that come with you. capitalism are not necessarily ones that are intended by capitalism. You know, you, you, yeah. could, you could say that we don't necessarily mm-hmm. even have true capitalism right now if corporations are rigging the market in different ways, right? Like, that's not a free market. That's not fair competition, right. which is theoretically what, what capitalism is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And you can apply that to America, but I don't think the movie's explicitly about America. I think it's no. just about that class warfare. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, you can that exists pretty, pretty much in every country, too. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. not limited yeah. to America. I, it's just human America. nature. Yeah. 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 I mean, from what it looks, it seems quite extreme there. You have, like, characters living in an apartment in, like, the shittiest place you can imagine. And then you have the rich people living in the nicest fucking... They have, like, their own backyard that's, like, has these tainted windows. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that disparity yeah. was... I don't know. But, like, of course that's going to be what they pick to do. Because you need, like, a a conflict in your movie. And why would you not pick, like opposites on a spectrum instead yeah. of like what do you want like just the middle <laughs> of the spectrum like with, with a slight little difference like where's the drama and storytelling that you can explore in a film that's yeah. the whole point and and it is so exaggerated yeah it's exaggerated but it's it's also true mm-hmm. yeah also makes sense a lot of my favorite movies use like exaggerated i guess kind of hyperbole to make commentary on real issues you know holy mountain synecdoche new york tons this movie you know where it's it's like it's using a more dramatic way of saying something than just like a flat out documentary might in order to kind yeah, of make yeah, a like point like an right it's entertaining totally it's very yeah. clear like what it's going for mm-hmm. and i like that about it too yeah whatever uh, armand <laughs> i hope he finds a movie he likes one day no, he likes he tons like Gemini of movies. Man? They're oh, just yeah, really good. bad. Does he like Gemini Man? He likes Adam Sandler movies a lot. Oh, good. Maybe he'll like Uncut Gems. No, that's the one he won't like. Yeah, oh, probably. Be liberal propaganda because yeah. they deformate it. <laughs> liberal, they're trying to teach us, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes, you can like, click on his profile and go through his fresh and rotten ratings, and it is a trip. 
it is certainly <laughs> it is certainly an interesting <laughs> read. <laughs> I was like, oh, you like that one. I was reading one. a lot of his stuff the other day, and it, was, it, is, it is a mind warp. Just what is happening. I just am so confused by what he says. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what he's even getting at. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Roger it's... Ebert called him a troll or something. I don't know. <laughs> he might, I, I he heard might, that wow. someone else said that. I didn't search it up for myself. but Okay. A lot of people think he's epic. a troll anyway. He might be the smartest of all time. Yeah. <laughs> He could be. We're all crazy. Yeah. He didn't like Gemini, man. So he's actually with you guys on that. Okay. I'm still the lone wolf on that one. Yeah. Yeah, you liked that more than Parasite, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite film of the year. What do you mean? <laughs> Gemini, man, with Will Smith. Did he give you back your channel yet, Dunks? Yeah. Yeah, I did talk to... I did get a chance to talk to Will after the filming of Gemini, man. Uh... Yeah, I got it back. Which he says will? he might do a might do yeah, a Wild, two. Wild West too. Oh, oh I really? talked to the really I talked excited. to the younger Wu. Oh, younger Wu. Oh, okay. <laughs> First Prince Will. <laughs> Thought the, the older one will. might be grumpier. Yeah. Pre Jaden. <laughs> Pre Jaden. Oh, Jay, where's Jaden right now? He was on a Netflix show, like The Get Down. And he's then doing music. I, I, never I think he's more him. focused on his yeah? music than he is acting, but. Oh, he was good. also doing voiceover for some Netflix anime. Really? Yeah. Okay. He's like yeah. one of the main characters. I forget what it's called. Yeah, he's but found his own it's way. It's supposed to be pretty bad. Sure. But... It's better than Aladdin. I wouldn't say he's found his own way, but <laughs> he certainly had a lot of help. At least he's not in movies with his dad anymore, like way. fucking awful After Earth type movies. What are you talking about? Like after Earth was a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, like Gemini Man was, an af- uh, was a masterpiece. After Earth is better, though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we're me. debating fucking two total disasters. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we should be talking about Parasite. Yeah. <laughs> what was the deal with The Rock? The Rock? The Rock. He gives him like this symbolic rock. Yeah. The friend. Oh, the I thought you were talking the about the actor, The Rock. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's I was the like, rock. when did Dwayne Johnson show up? Here's the actor, The Rock. <laughs> yeah. He's a symbol of good fortune. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was kind of like a Chekhov's rock, I guess. <laughs> Chekhov's rock. And I mean, yeah. like, yeah, they even said, like, when he when he received it, he's like, wow, this is really metaphorical. <laughs> Right. So yeah. I think it, he I think it was. Um, I think he said it was a literal. He said th- it is a me- metaphor. Yeah. This is yeah. a metaphor. I think. I think that it kind of plays into like the character's motivations in terms of like, if you didn't have that kind of a setup and you didn't sort of make this seem significant to that character, then it would probably be less believable that he would just like pick up this random rock and like bring it and try to. You know, use it to, as a weapon. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I could I could watch it for a third time and see if I can read into a bit more on what if the, the rock, rock is. Well, it's like to supposed to be anything. about. It was, well, he says it's like uh, it brings you good fortune, right? Yeah. It's like ah, if you have this rock, it's good luck. You'll become very fortunate. Mm-hmm. And the whole goal, know. the whole kid is like he's trying to. His whole goal is to kind of become rich you know like by the end of the movie he's learned absolutely nothing yeah. he's like yeah dad i'm gonna become rich i'm gonna buy the house ah yeah even though he's literally been hitting over the head with the fucking thing yeah the yeah, dude the like the thing. basement guy hit him over the head with it he still doesn't get it yeah. yeah i don't know it is a movie that i could watch a bunch of times for sure i'll yeah, certainly be is. buying it when it's out on blu-ray in north america although mm-hmm. korea is region a so i could probably just buy it right now but it's very entertaining so yeah, I'll watch it again. A crowd pleaser. If you crowd haven't pleaser, seen it already, whatever. please watch it. I don't know anybody that doesn't like this movie other than Armand White. So, <laughs> and that's usually a good sign. <laughs> like if you make a movie and Armand White trashes it, then you know you've done something right. <laughs> it's like a badge of honor. It's like getting booed at Cannes. <laughs> do they do that? Yeah. Yeah. Just boo a movie. Well, because like Cannes Can is like this super prestigious film festival where all the like big, um, big like foreign indie art house movies get premiered, right? And so yeah. with that comes a lot of people that are watching the movies to kind of be a part of the festival experience. And with that, everybody there knows that like all these 
reporters and critics are going to be in the audience with them and they're going to report on the crowd reactions. <laughs> so they're up. Oh yeah. Have you seen that I'm clip of the right there? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, the whole crow and cast is there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the clip of the uh ten minute standing ovation for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yeah. That was at Cannes. That's fucking stupid. Where it's like at this point it's just a competition. Cause like, cause one reporter will say like, oh yeah, there was a 20 minute standing ovation for this movie. The longest that has ever happened at Cannes. And everybody else is thinking like, okay, if I like a movie and I really want to make Quentin Tarantino happy, I have to stand there and clap for longer than 20 minutes. And so it's this contest to see who can do the longest standing ovation. Pretty much. Oh, this could boy. be a movie. This could be like a parasite type movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it can get to that point where it's so extreme. People are there for like an hour clapping. Mm-hmm. It's the right, natural it's been three up. hours. We got to start the next movie. Yep. No, we're still clapping. Twenty minutes is a long time. <laughs> I don't think you understand like how long that would actually feel oh, yeah. to clap for twenty <laughs> so minutes. Awkward. You have to see that clip if you haven't. Somebody posted to yeah, the sub. Check that out. Subreddit. It's awkward. It's That's terribly horrible. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and the cameraman's like way too close, and everybody's really uncomfortable. <laughs> Just keeps getting closer to Tarantino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I think we yeah, pretty much you guys covered this? this movie, unless anybody else had anything more to say about it. The lights. Somebody was saying that the lights, he's doing the lights before. It's kind of like a uh, it's a little hint. Oh, like the... Oh, like before it's revealed? Yeah. That he's yeah. down there doing the Morse code with the lights? Yeah. yeah. He's doing like Morse code before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was I, pretty. That was pretty clever. I bet you could translate the whole movie, like, do the Morse code, maybe, and, and find what he's <laughs> mm-hmm. saying. Totally, hundred percent. I, I imagine there's that level of detail. Well, I know that it, it's at least shown that you know the guy walks past and he's like, "Oh, the lights always blah blah blah." Like, I don't, I don't remember yeah. if that happened after or before, but perhaps they actually show it before. I don't know if you'll catch a full sentence because when we get the reveal that he's doing that with the lights theoretically uh, like what he says is that he just says thank you every time he <laughs> hears his footsteps yeah. or something like, <laughs> yeah. thank you for he's letting me live in your basement without you knowing <laughs> <laughs> i noticed my lights doing that <gasps> you should check your home yeah. there could be a secret a secret bunker which would be pretty cool so yeah you can make I friends think there is but you never know there's a lot of I would uh, love to find the there's a lot of class warfare man down there. What would you uh, what would you give Parasite out of ten or out of five? I'd give it a four out of five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm with you, Ralph. I think I'd, I'd give it the same. You guys okay. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry, we man. hate it. Four out of five is very good. It. What about you, Sir yeah. Sir Dunkel? These guys are Parasite haters. Don't listen to the don't listen to the Armand Whites out there. <laughs> I'm giving it five five out of five. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10. It so could move up to a 10. I think it's closer to a 10 than an 8. But mm-hmm. It's higher than our ratings, Alex. Yeah. Because we hated it. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> then Samuel Lisa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Now I want to talk about an actual great film. <laughs> uh, controversial one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you guys see this movie, Performance? Did we? Oh, shit. I hope we all did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So, performance is a movie. Um, yeah, spoilers. It's about. Well, I guess it came out nineteen seventy something. It's directed by 70. Nicholas Rogue. <laughs> seventy, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it stars Mick Jagger and some other guy. And it's about like, um, well. <laughs> he's like a, on, at it. the beginning he's like a criminal he's like a gangster working for a guy he pisses off his boss and they try to whack him or teach him a little lesson he ends up killing one of the guys and escaping trying to flee from the mob he hides out in an apartment with Mick Jagger who is a struggling musician trying to find his creative voice again and he's doing drugs with these two naked women and then <laughs> and it goes crazy from there <laughs> Oh, that's when it goes crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's when it really goes crazy. Um, I love this movie. I think it's one of the most unique, crazy, fucked up movies I've ever seen. And I had no idea what it was about the first time I saw it. So I'm curious. I, I knew it yeah, would get a reaction. Yeah. yeah. So what do you guys think? Well, <laughs> I think I watched the wrong film. I watched oh, yeah? Air Bud World Pump. World <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. 
How was that? I hear they're similar, though. That was good. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty similar. <laughs> was Mick Jagger in that? No, no, they couldn't get him to uh, reprise the role. <laughs> of Airbud? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I went into this one, I knew I would hate it to the most, <laughs> most I can hate something. And I, I did hate it as much as I thought I would. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I wanted okay. to pick something like really unique, especially for you, Donkey. Yeah, like I didn't was... want to pick, I didn't want to pick like the run of the mill mainstream movie. I wanted to pick something truly like revered <laughs> and respected by the art community and out there. Yeah, like this. Is it really reviewed? It's it's considered one of the best films to come out of the United Kingdom by Armand White. <laughs> oh no, of that century. <laughs> One of the best British films of the century. It's a fairly accurate representation of the UK. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the dialogue is really bizarre. And I imagine what, that's Gognor? like a UK thing. Yeah, they say yeah, things like that. Like the really guy's Cockney, name is Chaz. Cockney geezers, all sorts of. Uh, <laughs> and their, and their, um, their catchphrases and unique cadence of uh, communication that they have. That was one thing I did like about the movie. Because for me... I didn't hate it, actually. Um, I might actually be leaning more towards Ralph on this one, which is weird because normally this is the kind of thing where it's just, like, frustrating after a while. Like, I can... When it's, like, a real out-there concept, normally my limit is about 30 minutes before I just get tired, and I'm like, ah. But halfway through the movie, when Mick Jagger shows up, I thought it really improved um, the entertainment value for me. Hmm. Yeah, um, it becomes like but, a different movie almost. Yeah, but it was a up. consistent push and pull though of like, oh, that's a really cool idea. I really like the way they presented that. Oh, that really didn't work. Oh, now we're back to something kind of cool. And it was just like, I, I didn't even pay attention to the story. Like I, I couldn't. I even read the, like the wiki like after to like recap it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> that <yeah."> happened. <laughs> It's actually genuinely hard to understand what's happening for the first like yeah. third of the movie because of the editing. Yeah. The editing like is the, so it, it like starts groundbreaking off with and the bizarre. Freaking, the music is so loud. The music is like <laughs> and there's like there's a judge talking about shit and the music is just going fucking crazy. You can't hear any dialogue. And the, mm-hmm. oh man. Look up a crazy bus theme. That's that's what the soundtrack reminded me. <laughs> that, that's like one of the most like defining elements of it though is like that yeah. that bizarre editing especially at the beginning um apparently was partly because they had to like recut the film or something and mm-hmm. so like another editor stepped in and decided oh. to c- compress a lot of the information <laughs> that makes sense because this was actually a <laughs> yeah. movie from 1968 so it should be a 68 movie but then warner brothers was like uh too much sexuality too much violence and also mick jagger doesn't show up until halfway through the movie and so they just didn't want to release it and then rogue and the other director were like okay well we've got our own projects so whatever bye and then so another editor stepped in <laughs> to like recut the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie yeah, but i think it actually works part. like i i liked the beginning of the movie i i liked um how that was presented i i felt like it was very intentionally chaotic and gave it like a, a interesting personality yeah it gave it a really unique feel and then when he gets to mcjagger's house the editing style completely changes and mm-hmm. the tone and the like the pace of the movie gets a lot slower yeah. and more like internal like he's actually, you can actually focus. it's about the breaking down of this man and like him discovering himself mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's very bizarre like the shift the movie makes there's a lot going on with like gender like people in wigs and dressed as women like there's a boy in the film who like just walks around and delivers them drinks like when, while they're hanging out naked taking a bath like mm-hmm. he just doesn't care but even he's in a dress so it's like this weird thing where about identity yeah too hence the title we're like exactly performance you're like you don't know who's who who's doing what and who's really like even at the end of the movie Mick Jagger is like the one in the car being driven away not Chaz or was. Chaz, whose face turns into Mick Jagger. But wasn't Mick Jagger killed by Chaz? <laughs> Depends on how you Who interpret knows. it. Yeah, it's just insane. Mm-hmm. I love the backstory of the movie. Like, at the end of the credits, it's like, Warner Bros. made this movie. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, they did, didn't they? Because they thought that they were going to get basically, like, Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, they, they funded it based on that Beatles movie. Um, that came out mid sixties. Um, that Is was like it the a big hit. Yellow Submarine or the Long Day's Night? 
Uh, I or think it was Hard Day's Night. Um, hard Day's hard Night. Hard Day's Night, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so for <laughs> some <and> reason, <laughs> some, ex- some execs, long, yeah. yeah, just funded this film and they barely interfered, apparently. So they, they just let them do what the, whatever the fuck they wanted. <laughs> until yeah, until they us, showed them a cut of the film. <laughs> Until yeah, they were yeah, like, so, oh, they were like it was so completely unsalvageable that they had like they, they tried to hide it for a few years. I think I'm pretty sure it was it finished development late '60s, around '68, yeah. and they were just like, fuck it, just put it put it in the corner <laughs> for a bit. But then, yeah, they, just, it had to come out eventually. Yeah, yeah, and we got this. And at first, it wasn't received well, you know, because it's very bizarre. But it's found oh, an yeah. audience over time. And there was, like, legit, the first time I saw this, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, who's, who is who? <laughs> it, it went from a crime movie to, like, this weird musical. There's even a musical number in it later on, which is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I but like that book. I love that this movie, it doesn't, it, it's just everything. It doesn't have a genre. It just does whatever it wants. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the, it's um, like, first uses of, like, synthesizer in a film. Also, mm-hmm. which oh, is really? really interesting. Yeah, that was like a really yeah. new thing. Yeah, they really, they really, they really did use it. I yeah, <laughs> they did. It was quite obnoxious <laughs> at points. Yeah, my roommate was like, "Yeah, I'm not digging the these sounds." I, I did. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. I, I like really weird kind of chaotic shit. So yeah, that was more toward the beginning. Have you guys ever seen the movie Exit Through the Gift Shop? Yeah, I love it. Where the Mr. Mr. Robot. Or what's his Mr. name? Brainwash. Mr. Brainwash. He tells he tells him he's making this movie, and then he edits that oh, fucking God. nightmare thing together. This is kind yeah. of this is kind of the vibe I was getting from this movie. <laughs> it's just insane, so insane. Like eventually, you can wrap your head around it. You're like, oh, this guy is in a, this place now. Now, <laughs> now I can comprehend what's happening. Yeah. Hot take. I don't know. It seems like you guys disagree with me on this. I actually enjoyed the first section of the movie more than the second really Really? well i love the first section because it's it's like so unique and bizarre i was really i enjoy more when it gets into the characters gangster intimidation and just like that combined with the presentation like how it was shown i really enjoyed Mm -hmm. that I think I did enjoy that more too. Mm-hmm. Even. <laughs> that was, I could actually, that was actually, you know, it's like a gangster movie. Like, oh, he's doing gangster movie stuff. He's like burning this dude's car, mm-hmm. freaking like shaves up. the dude. Like, they okay. like actually shave someone's head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although later it does, uh, it's more easier to understand. It's like, yeah, that's get, it does get weirder. There's the part where they drug his, uh, was his drink or something with mushrooms? Yeah. Because they have yeah. a little mushroom garden. <laughs> yeah. The, the two ladies have a mushroom garden that they grow all these mushrooms in. And he has like this crazy drug trip where he goes back to his boss's office and Mick Jagger sings to him in his boss's chair. Yeah. Um, I, mean, that, I love that, that song. Re- that, really cleared, that really cleared stuff up for me with the <laughs> oh, yeah. when, that, <laughs> when he started doing drugs and it got even more ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It kind of it kind of turned into like Holy Mountain Light for a bit. You know, <laughs> Holy Mountain Light. What do you mean by that? Not as not as extreme, but like you know, Holy Mountain tackles <laughs> like the the concept of like identity through like oh yeah druggy kind of ways. You know, sexuality. There's, yeah. there's a lot of nudity in to that movie. movie though. Yeah, I think so. To this one, yeah, it's way yeah. more scatterbrain. It's it, it felt a bit like they were throwing whatever they could at the wall, really experimental, just seeing yeah, what they could get away with, basically. So and that's yeah. why it, when it hits it, it is quite effective and when it doesn't it really is quite quite difficult to sit through at points. Mm-hmm. It is trying to be quite a few things at once, and in some ways I feel like you know with I guess even with the base concept of the movie, there's a lot more that could be done with it, and I I almost wish that certain aspects of the film were either more fleshed out or more extreme. But at the same time, I understand that that would probably come at the expense of its uniqueness so Mm -hmm. did you notice this is the second movie in a row that had the quote nothing is true everything is permitted the old assassin's creed line oh Oh, yeah it originated in assassin's creed (laughs) (laughs) yeah 97 1970s assassin's creed yeah (laughs) the dialogue it it was very strange is it supposed to be comedic because i was looking on the IMDb so. and it reckons it's like a crime drama and 
it's is it un- unintentionally funny because you have really bizarre dialogue like yeah but like a lot of the humor just comes from the cockney geese stuff i think or just the weird way just you phrase things when you have that accent and the whole english side of it like there's that really weird scene where that that woman asks do you like my physique and he's like yeah you're in good condition it's like <laughs> what why <laughs> <Like, laughs> <totally laughs> like grabs her pectoral muscle <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like a close up on it. it you don't really say strange. that. To, you don't say that to people. <laughs> <laughs> You're in good condition. Yeah, yeah. That scene where he was um like tripping balls on mushrooms. At first, I was just like, what? what? Like, because because it's like no different when he's tripping balls to how the dialogue normally is. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, or the editing. It's just as crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh. The editing's just crazy. It's very yeah. experimental. And it out takes there. a while to I get used it. to that. That's why I didn't dig the the first thirty minutes as much as the last. Because after that point, I was like, okay, I'm I'm kind of getting into the just the frenetic, just lack of cohesion going on now. I'm, I'm just mm-hmm. in it now. I might as well mm-hmm. just commit. It's the editor's movie. A hundred percent the editor. <laughs> Pretty much, just yeah, yeah. in full control of the movie. Yeah, and he did a very unique job. I would say the score and the music is like the other big draw mm-hmm. to this film because it does have musicians in it, and it's about musicians. I think the whole thing is like a metaphor or an allegory for the the music industry. Yeah, like that whole crime angle of kind of like taking someone, morphing them into this image of what you want them mm-hmm. to be, and then sending them out on these jobs, and then like that's how I, that's what I got from the movie anyway. But like Randy Newman did it. music for this. Jack, uh, I can't say his name. Jack Nitsi, Nitsi, what the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> I can't say his goddamn name. It's a weird last name. Uh, and then Mick Jagger did music for the film as well, and cool his scene. shit was really good. Memo for mm-hmm. Turner, I love that song. Yeah, I like that music. That, that music video is probably my favorite part. Oh really? Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, even though it was just complete, it's just nonsense. Total <laughs> nonsense. Why that's in there? But it was awesome. And then the dude yeah, just like, like strips naked in the middle of the office. He grabs yeah. the lamp and like just pushes it towards the camera and swings. There's some creative like cool imagery in the movie. Uh huh. Did you guys what, like when she licks the guy's nostrils and then sticks her tongue in his mouth? Yeah, that was great. No, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that. Either. <laughs> a lot of nipple stuff as well. Lots of nipples. Yeah, there were a lot yeah, of nipples. There's a lot of sexual thing. stuff in this movie. There was like a shot that turned into a nipple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's this whole fucking, oh yeah fucking like zoomed in like out of zoomed into like a curtain and turned into one yeah it was like some fucking what the fuck was that everything is nipple <laughs> that was the true message the true there message. are no consequences <laughs> so there was clearly this identity thing between Mick Jagger and Chaz like you don't know who was who or you could they could be interchangeable I felt the same way with the girls too because the girls also kind of looked like the guys. Like, the French girl had, like, the black hair, and she had, like, pale skin, like Mick Jagger. And the the girl kind of looked like Chaz. Did yeah. anyone get that? I wasn't this? thinking that. <laughs> We're not the only one. You were yeah, I can see what you mean, yeah. 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 But, like, it's that's like these too four much versions. To from, like, <laughs> but it's like the these four view. versions of himself, almost. Like, all intermingling. Mm-hmm. These all, mm-hmm. like, these four different elements of his ego. Like, when the first scene where the gangster's, like, talking to Mick Jagger, it's, like, super cryptic, like, what they're saying, you know? It's, like, there's, like, it's kind of like the scene in The Shining, where he's talking yeah. to the bartenders, like, they get what they're talking about, but the audience doesn't really get it. Mm. Well, do they ever say what they do, like, as far as a crime organization? Or, like, no, what they I think are? they just extort yeah. people. That's it's why, pretty, that's he why comes I took to, like, it. collect debts. Like, people will pay him yeah. money, and then he'll be like, oh, well, time yeah. to collect. That's but that whole element's very vague. That's why I took it as like a music industry allegory, because that's not, it's sure. not really about that. Yeah, because the whole, like, God, I can't even really say second act, but the middle of the movie, <laughs> like, it, the gangster stuff isn't really that important in, at that point. Uh huh. Yeah. In but it's like, it's it like lingering beginning. in the background. You know, it comes yeah, back. Yeah, it's kind of like a his, like, phone call for the, yeah. that character. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole reason he's hiding out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good driving force for the story. I think that that element does bring a lot of good tension to a lot of the scenes in the second half of the movie, where it kind of comes back and revisits the whole gangster element. I, I think that yeah. there, are f- there are a few points in the movie where it is pretty successful at what it tries to pull off. Mm-hmm. 
Why is Mick Jagger so bored that he just lets this, like, he knows he's a gangster, like, immediately. <laughs> it's all the He's drugs. just like, yeah, we're just going to let him stay here, whatever. He's a hippie. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I guess because he's on drugs all the time. I yeah. <laughs> this will be fun if we just let this guy be here. All right. Yeah, why not? Free love. He's a juggler. <laughs> it was the 70s. <laughs> he was well, technically the 60s. It was technically the 60s. Yeah. I do like that this is another movie where the shots are very varied. Like I did I didn't mm-hmm. feel like much repeated in terms of framing. Like there were certain shots that looked similar uh in a bunch of the different scenes uh one of the more common things that I noticed was you get like an a, extremely uncomfortable close up on someone's face, not even really showing their whole face and then someone else in the background. Like those were some interesting shots. And yeah, even yeah. even within like the confines of these small rooms that a lot of the the film is shot in, you still get a lot of a, a, a very healthy variety of of angles. I thought it was visually interesting for the most part. Yeah, totally agree with you. Do you like when they wrote poop on his wall? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> blood poop in the blood. Yeah. Why did they write poop on his wall and <laughs> uh-huh. blood? <laughs> It was upside down. It was like a comical color as well. Bright red. (laughs) Is that an English thing? (laughs) Oh, yeah, we do that all the time. It's like a (laughs) hazing thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) Poop. This is a true embarrassment. It's what the geezers do in London. Like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's one thing to, like, humiliate and, (laughs) and, like, torture someone, but to write poop on their wall. Like... (laughs) <laughs> That's the ultimate humiliation. It's too far. <laughs> it means something very different to British people. Although it was neat seeing um, Paddington Station um, in from the 60s. Because I was there yesterday, so seeing the contrast of how it's changed was interesting to me. I'm more of a fan of Paddington 2. <laughs> Paddington I've been meaning to watch that, actually. Very similar to, to this yet. movie. Oh, that movie is awesome. Yeah, so I hear. Very similar to this. Oh, I found the name of that composer I was looking for. Jack Nietzsche. That's how you say it. Okay. Because mm. I always get shit in the comments for saying names wrong. So. Yep. <laughs> That's the guy that I'm really angry at. <laughs> <laughs> he only did one of the many songs. I bet the Mick Jagger music was the most blaring and loud. Of Mick Jagger was listening to all this music. He was just like plugging stuff in. Like He was just like playing with a big freaking amp at one point. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was, still, he, he was learning how to use the synthesizer. It was a new thing. <laughs> and he put it in the movie. Yeah. Because it didn't really matter what you made. It would be a new sound. Mm-hmm. He I was like a guy well, who kind I of... Liked, I liked the synth. I, I did too. But it like he's a guy who escaped from the music industry almost. And he's in this confined area to find his creative spark again. So he's surrounded himself with drugs and women, hoping that would work. But it doesn't really. So he's kind of in like the same position as Chaz, where mm. like both trapped here i I enjoyed that element of it yeah overall really unique film very unique love it i would actually probably watch this again sooner than i would don't look now i think it's more entertaining this this movie is that the one where the freaking uh that evil guy cuts his throat at the end it was was like a guy in a raincoat Spoilers. Yeah. 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 Little, little <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, for the like, no. right. <laughs> for a movie that came out fifty years ago. <laughs> what did? Uh, what? Uh, can you guys explain this part? At oh. the end, he's like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna freaking shoot you now." He shoots Mick Jagger. The bullet goes into <laughs> Mick Jagger's head. This is the, my favorite part. The bullet goes into his body, and you see it like going through, and then a photo of a man materializes inside of his body. It's like a photograph of an old man, and the bullet pierces through the photo and keeps going. It's like it's like identity, man. It's like who he is in his head versus who he is externally. It's like who did sure, you really right. kill? Okay. <laughs> it's quite modern arty, yeah. despite it being from the seventies. It's got that. Like I saw it being compared to um, the pop art movement, where it's almost like anti art in a way, but by doing that, in a it, like it makes it art. Yeah, it's that mm-hmm. that like infuriating concept that does have a weird amount of credence because there is there is like stuff. I, I would recommend watching the movie. Like I I'm glad that I saw it, and yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm more with Ralph in terms of like my enjoyment. It is a bit rebellious. Yeah, exactly. It feels they're just testing shit out, like. Let's just see what we can do. 
Like, why yeah. even restrict ourselves in any way? Like, fuck it. Like, <laughs> but more importantly, given the nature of the film, that kind of rebellious nature of the characters and the genre that it's set in, like, I think that totally fits that experimental mm-hmm. style. It doesn't feel yeah. just like thrown in. Sure. It, it's it's really entertaining to see where this story goes next because you just have no idea what the fuck is going to happen. No, oh, yeah, I'm with you. That's what I got out of it. I give it a five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you guys? It's pretentious in a way that a lot of art movies can be. Uh-huh. But that is what makes it good, though, at the same time. Because it, it does show you something unique that you, you can't experience in other places. I think people do need to sort of push boundaries and be weird and different in this extreme way in order to, you know, experiment with the formula and you know, stop things from getting boring. Because it will like it will inspire people, and people will take what works about this movie and like the composition and all these weird little experimental things and build on it and make new and better stuff. And at the same time, yeah. I wouldn't judge anyone for hating the movie. Like I'm sure a lot of people listening and on the cast right now undoubtedly oh, yeah. do. I um, hated it, it while it, I was watching it the first time, <laughs> like for the first half. Yeah, it can be unlikable and irritating, <laughs> yeah. but I think it is worth watching. It's one of those. But I, I like it a lot more than some of the previous one of those type movies like, I don't know, Southland Tales or Showgirls or something like that. I think it's much more interesting those. than those movies. <laughs> so, and this yeah, is so sorry. much more innovative than those. Like, this mm-hmm. is actually something different and fresh. Those yeah. are so... They, they think they're fresh, but they're yeah. just the same shit. Regurgitated. Yeah. Uh, I'll give this uh, the lowest score possible. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I did That's actually totally think fair. this was kind of similar to Southland Tales, mm-hmm. but I actually oh, really no, liked that movie, even though like, it's the worst shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is kind of like one of those where you got You should probably see it anyway, just to I'm hate a it. I'm pimp, and pimps don't commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> there is no rock actor in this. I guess Mick Jagger is the rock in this. Yeah, yeah this is worth seeing, just if not at least just to make fun of it. And get angry. <laughs> <laughs> what is your lowest rating possible? Where does your scale end? Uh, this is, would be a negative 700 out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy you watched it and got something out of it, Dunky. <laughs> or Sir Dunkle, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I give this one a 7 out of 10. It's closer to an 8 than a 6. And the even though... Not every moment worked for me. Not everything hit. I think that on a second watch, I would probably, I'd, I'd imagine being more comfortable with uh, those aspects, being able to anticipate them rather than it coming as a surprise. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Totally. Uh, something I noticed upon this watching, uh, this viewing of it, uh, a lot of mirrors in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mick Jagger's yeah, introduced yep. through a mirror. Like lots of mirrors. I yeah, guess that there was like, the, whole <laughs> there was the zoom in butt shot thing. in the mirror. Oh yeah, when she's injecting heroin into her butt. Yeah, <laughs> that character is so great though. All she does life. is just do drugs and fuck around. It was vitamin B twelve. <laughs> oh okay. I thought it was heroin. Stupid me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a really uh, obvious one where they're like they had like a mirror like up up to this face and like half of the mirror is like the lady's face and the other half is just the dude's face behind oh the yeah mirror. it was kind of in keeping with like the identity thing yeah mm-hmm. all but right you know there are also fuckers in this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was a lot of shit on the screen there was like the the house like so much material so many fabric and like patterns on the screen yeah a lot of colors the setting improved it so much. I think that time period is just really interesting, aesthetically even, and just the way people speak and everything is has always been interesting to me. I was like a huge fan of like Mad Men and that whole, you know, that period. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Question I'm glad you guys time. got something out of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to some questions. If you want to leave your own questions for the next episode, have a head over to Sardonicast Reddit, where Ralph will leave a thread. The um. Most upvoted question this week is one you you can choose to answer if you want because it is. I, I feel like I have to read them because it is like the most upvoted one by far. So I'm going to read it, but you don't have to answer. Yeah, okay, it's better be a good one. Zia the good fella asks this: What's the fattest ass you've ever seen in a movie? Huh. 
Oh, wow. and, and don't don't cheat with like Big Mama's house or something like that. Or okay. Norbit. <laughs> like, um, you, when you, in Black Dynamite, when they start playing the song uh, that I use in my reviews, uh, you, oh, right. like when they're like out walking in the park, Michael Jai White has a fat butt at that moment. I don't know if they like patted it. It looked like he was wearing a diaper or some shit. It was so weird. It might have been like a, a <laughs> 70s aesthetic choice or something. I don't know what was up with his pants, but he had the fattest butt in that scene. Somebody post that to the subreddit. I'm not making this up. Yeah. He's, got, he's, he's thick in that scene. That's my answer. Uh, I'm trying to think. You don't keep a list? The answer <laughs> is like animated movies they always have the most yeah. like voluptuous women oh like, like jessica Miss, rabbit oh i was yeah, thinking of the minion. minion oh dude that's when a great minion cool. takes his butt out. <laughs> <laughs> hmm <laughs> like the hippo from madagascar is that cheating no, oh, he's still my gloria <laughs> <laughs> moto moto yeah oh yeah moto moto uh sure i'll go with that moto moto yeah. that's my answer if you need more time to think i'll just edit it out so no pressure <laughs> more time to think i mean we don't have to stay on this one butts. for like a long time or anything <laughs> yeah i'm good <laughs> it's weird how they kind of normalized it in animated movies yeah yeah it's just a it's, common yeah thing i now. was thinking about that earlier actually is it, is it just to like entertain like the bored dads <laughs> and that have to take their kids to it like they make mrs incredible like really sexy for some reason like, yeah she's got a really reason? thin waist a lot of female yeah. animated characters thin waist big butt just mm -hmm. a lot of I don't know. <laughs> I think animate, I think the animators are just just freaking weird, horny guys. Yeah, that would explain <laughs> yeah. it. That, that would that really explain a lot. lot. Yeah, and that's probably true. The Maybe we're all just weird, horny Jam. guys, and we all just want to watch and draw those things all the time. <laughs> the oh yeah, that's actually a good. Answer well, no, too. yeah, there was there was that shot where like they're on the court. You fucking and then, hit some of his butt. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. There's a lot of butt yeah. stuff in Space Jam. It's I like think half his butt the jokes takes are like ball and slam dunks it. Yeah. That's a, a common, like, punchline in animation. Like, we already mentioned the minions and yeah. loads of those bad animations. Specifically Space that. Jam. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. over the hedge, the uh, turtle in that movie, you get to see his ass. Oh. For what that's worth. <laughs> I never saw it. You're not missing out on anything. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Fuck that question. <laughs> okay, let's let's do one um, specifically for, for Sir... So, Dunkles, <laughs> Big C Baller has this to ask. For Dunky, do you ever get annoyed with how excessive your fans like to quote to you, or do you always think it's funny? Well, okay, maybe it's not always fun. Mm. Maybe, mm. you know, sometimes it's too, too taken too far out of the context. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't really care that much either. Yeah. Do you have an example? <laughs> You're very quotable, though. Yeah, the big one's the knack thing, right? <laughs> Oh, well, Nick, yeah. yeah. Nick well, is just a, kind of a... It's classic. a game that brings a lot of emotions out of people. One, one that I've seen fairly frequently in, it, since the video is uh, you're nitpicking and biased, I win by buy. That's a, that's a common post. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yes. in, in movie-related <laughs> forums and our subreddits. Mm -hmm. Whenever somebody yeah. disagrees with something, it's a pretty... It's a pretty entertaining <laughs> way to finish off a conversation and end it. So... <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind that. No. That's that's pretty much appropriate anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you ever do you ever get people that like meet you and then tell you to do a voice to to like say <laughs> one of your lines and like say the thing? Yeah. Yeah. I get people that tell me to frown. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> awkward when I, I try to do it. Yeah, I don't mind it. They always want me to say spaghetti and meatballs, but that's not. I didn't even make that. That's not even mine. Mm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think that one's answered. Let's do one from the dabbing rats. Dabbing <laughs> rats? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, it's Reddit. It's, 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 I'm it's, sorry, it's one. Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Skip it. of the year. That's what I have to say. <laughs> but they ask anyway this. Which is easier for you? Making a review of a movie you consider good or of one you consider bad? What do you enjoy doing more? And let's extend that to games as well for Sir Doink a lot, or whatever we're calling it. <laughs> Sir Doink it. I think it's more fun to do. It's more, more satisfying to do one-on-ones you like. 
It's mm. probably a lot easier and more entertaining to do one on you hate, one you hate, but mm-hmm. it's much harder to do. Yeah, like, especially with like a game, because yeah. games tend to be a lot longer than a two-hour movie, you know? Like if, if you like really dislike Death Stranding, for example. Yeah, yeah, and then people say you're <laughs> playing it wrong if you didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, that was like a fifty hour game. Yeah. There's like <laughs> seven minutes of footage on the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what I was playing it. Did yeah. you just record the entire time? So you'd have the, all of that footage yeah. or Yeah, just record Man. the whole game. I don't think it's any easier or harder one way or the other. It really depends mm. on how passionate I am about the movie in either direction. So something yeah. like my Synecdoche New York review is going to be very thorough and in depth. And same with the old boy review, you know, like those are two extremes. Whereas there's tons of movies that I really enjoy, but maybe it's in theaters. I don't really want to spoil it and I don't want to say too much about it. Or what I have to say isn't really so thorough and in depth that I'm going to create like a big analysis about it. And in the same way, you know, there's bad movies where, you know, it's like, oh, it just didn't click. You know, there's it's it's mm-hmm. just below the bar and I don't really have all these huge criticisms against it. I just didn't like it. So it really just depends on how passionate I am in either direction. I wouldn't say that one is easier or harder. It's just a matter of how much effort I decide to put into it. Mm-hmm. I kind of approach them differently. Like the good ones I tend to talk about more casually. So I have more fun with them. And they're like better for your soul, I think, too. To what just talk soul? about something you like. <laughs> oh, we're all soulless monsters now. Is, did Disney take that too? Yeah, Pixar. You know, oh, Pixar. Oh, yeah, because they're making soul, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you yeah. know? It all comes back. Um, bad movies I'm a little more in depth with. I do not have fun watching them or <laughs> writing the notes, but the editing is fun. Like once I have my thoughts yeah. written down and recorded, yeah. that's when it gets fun. You get to yeah. be more comedic with it too. Mm-hmm. Then you can just destroy the movie, or like you <laughs> scroll through it, and you're like, "Oh that's my god, only, this is that's fucking awful." That's the only awful. thing that makes it bearable. Yeah, like let me zoom in on this thing. <laughs> that was fucking awful. Yeah, because otherwise you lament like, "God, I've seen Show Dogs four times." <laughs> yeah, I must feel like the only person. It's just a waste work. of time. The ones yeah, you pick, yeah. out, and now like, I can say, "All right, I it just, was for work." I can't deal with those. <laughs> you go out of your way to have I'm like, like <laughs> miserable experiences. I'm like addicted to it though. Yeah, like, at least I, you enjoy I, it, I, I watched guess. um the a Christmas corgi the other day. <laughs> <laughs> a Christmas corgi. I thought it was the Queen's corgi. Is there a no, Christmas no, it's one a, now? It's, Is it the same? It's not animated. It's like oh. a live action kind of hallmarky. The Christmas <laughs> Prince. <laughs> yeah, I only watched it because I have a corgi as well, so I have my okay. point of reference. He enjoyed it. <laughs> he enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, he's a dog myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like depending on the fan base of a film, too, if you're doing a negative review, will influence just how in-depth you feel you have to be. Because it, it, at some point, if you're just preaching to the choir, you might not want to put in the effort of making this whole gigantic case against something. But right. if you're trying to persuade someone, not necessarily change their mind, but at least let them understand where you're coming from and that you're not just nitpicking and biased... Uh, then, then you might want to have more uh, substantial claims and like try to back them up better too. Yeah, like the Game of Thrones one, I was way more in depth than like the Aladdin one because mm-hmm. everyone already hates mm-hmm. Aladdin. Yeah, and it's more about like mocking Disney and making fun of them because like tear them down a peg <laughs> than actually like analyzing why it's a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas Game of Thrones, there's a lot to, I think to dissect there that no one had yeah. done at that point. So yeah, it is different. You're saying you didn't like Game of Thrones? Did you? Did you yeah, it was great. The me and Armand White were watching it. Oh, oh like cool. <laughs> did he did he notice the uh, the alt right uh, metaphor in it? Oh. <laughs> he didn't that was a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever the fuck he says. He said, "Ah, yes, this scene was very Man of Steel like." <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of Man of Steel like stuff in that season. <laughs> I, I like a review that starts a sentence with "Ah, yes." <laughs> it's a very Armand White <laughs> review. I bet he's a nice guy. We can't mm. we can't make fun of this guy. <laughs> Based on what? If you want to come on, like, Armand, come on, he's yeah. welcome. Mm. I've seen him. People do interviews with him, and he's like, he's super freaking. He's like a really smart guy when you talk to him. Yeah. He's like just talking about movies, like referencing these obscure movies nobody's ever seen. Yeah, maybe that's they don't like exist. a superpower. 
being oh, able yeah. to do that. Because then you, you, you get to say that nobody else knows what they're talking about. If you can just name some yeah. movies that people haven't seen, you're like, I'm the real expert. You're not a true cinephile. He is. <laughs> they're like, yeah, this is a great Joker. This is the great movie with the Joker. He's like, ah, yes, I remember the original Joker from 1937. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the original Joker. <laughs> we have a question here that I think is interesting. From Motionless Upon the Air. Do you guys have any TV commercials or online ads that particularly get under your skin or that you just find awfully made? I've got one if you guys want to think. We Before the show started, we were talking a bit about the Adobe like software, mm -hmm. like Adobe Premiere, Photoshop. Um, I've seen a few adverts for that package where they they choose to advertise it to the... Well, the Reddit crowd, basically, by like, hey, fellow memers, do you want to like put a meme face on your friends? Like that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> do you remember, like, oh, what was that? Was it League of Legends that, that had that weird There's a like, bunch. meme skin? Yeah, there are loads of examples of that kind of, I, I, anytime they try and do it, because it's always so late to the party as well. Because like, mm -hmm. memes, memes change so quickly, and it's like faster and faster. Yeah, like, and commercials are very overproduced. Yeah. they take mm -hmm. a long time. By the time, yeah, time it's it's, it's all yeah, yeah, especially if like a game like designer or like production company is uh, designing a game and, or like a DLC based around like a meme, like that takes time. <laughs> so by the time they finish working on it, it's already so out of date that it's nothing but embarrassing. Yeah, like the brilliance of South Park. The reason they're so current. It's because exactly. the animation is terrible. <laughs> they, yeah, they make, make it, it in like four days, days. basically. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't even That's... say it's terrible animation. Uh, no, it's I, I would say compared to Miyazaki, it's, it's terrible just, it's animation. Streamlined. But it's intentionally <laughs> yeah. very simple yeah, animation, so that system. it's quick to do. Yeah, it's a good system. Because yeah. that's not the point. The point is the writing and the comedy, yeah. not the animation. Every time I go to the states, I turn on the TV in the hotel, and I'm just amazed by how how terrible all these commercials are. Like, Canadian commercials are bad, too. But as soon as I go to the States, it's like nothing but lawyers and prescription medication. And it's like... <laughs> the prescription medication is, like, listing all these side effects, and then the yeah. lawyers are like, have, have you been hurt by this prescription medication? You can have a claim. And it's just this, like, self-serving symbiotic relationship almost. And then there's, like, these these, like... I don't know if this counts. I was uh, watching this like televangelist, like preacher that was trying to convince people to give give him like five thousand dollars, saying that it was like it would like it would be planting a seed for Jesus and it would grow. And if you like, <laughs> literally, just marketing yeah, himself bullshit. towards people that are already down on their luck, like this is their last chance. These like poor uneducated americans that are like going to be persuaded by this man like oh i could really use the money right now i'm gonna give him all my savings that's disgusting there was one that i saw uh not too long ago because i watch a lot of old people tv whenever i'm watching cable the only reason i have cable is so i can do my oscars commentary <laughs> is there but, any other option um, oh yeah exactly it's there's nothing else on television <laughs> at this point so i'll watch like judge judy or like the price is right or something and uh at, at a certain point uh, there was a there was like a programming thing that said Larry King special report and it was this whole block but it was like a, a paid advertising block so it wasn't actual Larry King live or whatever it's called it was literally listed as Larry King special report and it was a whole setup where they were pretending as if it was basically his show but he was just selling this this fish oil Saying like <laughs> that, that, that these fish oil capsules. When was this on? Is this like so an infomercial? Much... Three o'clock in the morning. You can morning? find this shit on YouTube. It's disgusting. And then I searched <laughs> it up on YouTube, and I found out that there are several of these Larry King special report things advertising all these different products. And the entire point is just to trick old people into thinking that he's actually endorsing <laughs> these things legitimately, and that it's well, not Larry like a paid King. block. And it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. It's liter it literally exists to prey on old people that are already like. Kind of dumb. Doesn't he like? Doesn't he interview people? Yeah. Is he, like interviewing like a yeah. Fish basically, oil it's container? like they had this setup that it it wasn't at his studio. It was like just at a table in some like kitchen set or something. But he was like interviewing them on like, oh, so these are the best fish oil. Yeah, they they actually have more of the fish oil in it than other fish oil pills. And so if you're old and you have bad joints, wink, wink. 
uh, then you should probably get these, or else you're gonna die right away. So, like, it's disgusting. It's not gonna do anything. But yeah, I could go on about bad commercials for forever. I, I think all of them are fucking awful. And I guess just to finish my point, it's more often than not that I look at an ad campaign and all I'm thinking is like, some advertising executive got paid so much money to come up with this. Why? Well, give me money. Just hire me. I'll make a good ad campaign. I can make something that'll <laughs> stick, right? But they won't let you. Of course they won't. You'll, you'll say that, and then they'll put a thousand like uh, like precautions on you. Like you oh, can't yeah, do this. You can't do this. But then you, you but then you look anybody, at like the most successful ad campaigns where they just like gave Tim and Eric free reign to do whatever they wanted, and then you got the Old Spice commercials, which was a huge success. Right? Yeah. So and you actually let creative people do what they want. Those are the but successful they don't do ones. That. That's not how lawyers or PR people think because yeah. they're worried about being sued and America. Yeah. Yeah. America sucks. Oh, that yeah. Way. You can sue anybody. Uh huh. It's like a part of the culture. Yeah. In other countries, <laughs> if, you, if your lawsuit is found to be frivolous, you have to pay the other person's legal fees. But that's not a thing in America. So everybody just sues left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why they advertise lawyers <laughs> between every single yeah. commercial. It keeps break. the economy going. You're figuring it out. Yep. Very Have good. you been conned by Larry King? <laughs> <laughs> Call this number. We'll get a lawyer right to your house. <laughs> All right. What about you guys? I kind of rambled for a bit. Oh, so Disney good. movies. I'd count those as commercials. Which ones? <laughs> They're fucking commercials for the brand. Hey, that's all they that's are. That's what Armand White said about Toy Story, okay? Oh, yeah? Which mm. one? The fourth one? All of them. Oh. <laughs> or maybe the but, maybe the later installments. The, only those were a commercial. Yeah, that well, is kind of how I feel about extent. like these live-action Disney remakes. They are like these just ads, ads basically for the brand and for like whatever the movie's about, like yeah. Aladdin or whatever. Keep Aladdin fresh in people's minds. It doesn't even actually matter what the movie is or what it's about or if it's good. Did you see all those, uh, all the merchandise for the Lion King remake where it wasn't yeah. the exact same design as the animated version, but they ma they managed to change the design just enough to be like appealing to to children, so they made it more animated. Uh, I'm like, that's fucking cheating. If you're gonna make a movie like a little bit in between, if you're gonna make a movie where you're claiming like, no, it has to be ultra realistic, <laughs> then you can't just go back on that. And all your mer merchandise is like, oh well, they're kind of cartoony now. Fuck you. Well, then it's no just a real lion, like a real lion. Yeah, you to own like a real fucking parrot. <laughs> like, toy. it's not cute. It's not you know fun. What, I'm trying to. I don't know. I can't think of a good one. A really good, a good commercial. Hmm. I think one of my favorite was uh, Hogan. Hulk Hogan had a grill. He had like a big <laughs> infomercial where he's making stuff on the grill. Yeah, it's like one of those portable like a, grills. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, like a George movie. Foreman. Yeah, but it's Hulk Billy Hogan Mays grill. Has some good ads too. Hulk Hogan. Ah, yeah. oh, Billy Mays. Yeah. Flex Seal guy. Flex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever. I don't have TV, so I I don't ever see these anymore unless I the go slap, somewhere. The slap well, what guy. about what about like YouTube oh, ads? Then chop, yeah. has anybody One ever slap, endorsed a slap. VPN and it got really under your skin? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's a, oh, was it Raid Shadow Legends? That's the one. I opened my email one day and it just had four hundred emails about Raid. <laughs> Better help. <laughs> or whatever yeah, I got a lot from Raid. They're awful. Mm -hmm. Stop emailing me, Raid, if you're listening to this. They're listening. <laughs> what I do like is there's like a uniformity to every like food infomercial. Like they all they all will do the same thing. They're like, God, this is for this. This Hogan grill is for making a burger, but also we can cut a pineapple in half and cook <laughs> yeah. a pineapple in here now. And it also <laughs> yeah. fixes your car. <laughs> there is a formula that's like very cozy. They have this whole <laughs> block of advertising space. They're gonna list yeah. every <laughs> single potential possible way you could use the product. Like flex oh, sealies, like broke my you arm. can dip your tools in it, and then you'll have a comfortable <laughs> no-slip grip. It's like okay, <laughs> really? All right, I guess you could technically do that. Like, who's watching that? Like, oh, I can finally add a plastic grip to my wooden <laughs> hammer. <laughs> I got splinters all the time, but never again. Oh, the classic one is that knife. He would throw the pineapple up in the air and slice it in half. Oh yeah, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> the miracle blade or something. Fruit what? ninja. That was they did that classic. in the commercial. They threw the the fruit up in the air and he cut it. <laughs> he just kept doing that. That was his big trick. He's like, ah, this is a great knife. Yeah, throws the pineapple up, fucking slices in half. <laughs> kept doing that like a hundred times. 
I gotta see that one. I actually have one of those products in my kitchen. Um, like a knife it is, but the gimmick is that it can supposedly cut through anything. It's one yeah. of those. <laughs> like if you want to cut through like a piece of sheet metal, yeah. use this knife. They always take <laughs> out like a like muffler banana. and start cutting through it and they're like, yeah, look at that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> knife this is, is completely knife ruined too. now, but... You gotta dispose money. of a body, <laughs> this is the knife. <laughs> yeah. Hogan, bring in the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> one more question? Yeah, let's end on this one. From Pirate Disco King YT. For everyone... What is the most memorable encounter or experience you've had with a stranger in an online game? Oh, man. Oh. I've got one if you guys want to think. <laughs> okay. So I was, like, obsessed with the uh, the Xbox 360 game uh, Halo Wars for a long time. Oh, really? I'd play it online um, with one of my friends. Um, and one, one time we were just casually playing away, and I get a message from someone on my, like, opposing team saying quit now or I'll freeze your Xbox. Oh, shit. And I was like, <laughs> nah, forget about it. He's, 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 bl he's bluffing. <laughs> and, then, and then the next minute, like, my teammate, he just disappears off, off Xbox Live. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, like, shit. I, th the fear I felt in that moment, like, he's going to red ring my Xbox. <laughs> so th this is the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. He actually works for Microsoft. Yeah, but we, we wound up befriending him and we found out that he bought like a, what do they call it? Like a J-tagged Xbox off of eBay, so he can go oh, around no. freezing people's Xboxes. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. And eventually, it got. He threatened like one of my other friends that he was going to freeze his Xbox. So we like we all blocked him and like hid. That's but, so yeah, funny. That's a, that's a yeah, that's a great memory of mine. <laughs> Be careful out there, kids. Yeah, yeah. Hackers are scary. <laughs> yeah, the early. Uh... The early days of online gaming was pretty great. I remember yeah. uh, playing StarCraft. And uh, there was this conversation. I lived in uh, like Edmonton, Alberta. And then these other people were like talking about like, oh, yeah, they're, uh, we're from Winnipeg. And I said, me too. But I was answering to a previous question. But I was so young at the time. I didn't like I didn't just think like, oh, yeah, I'm going to correct myself. And, and just say, like, oh, actually, I meant me too to this other thing. And so then mm -hmm. then they were like, oh, what part of Winnipeg do you live in? I was like, uh, south. <laughs> and then I just got scared and quit because <laughs> I was so embarrassed. Yes. <laughs> and it's haunted my memories ever since of just this, like, awkward moment that literally meant nothing, really. I mean, it was, it was nothing. Yeah. It was just one of those, like, dumb sort of, like, oops. Little bit of cringe. I guess I'm gonna think about that at night for no reason. <laughs> and then I guess I guess on top of that, I installed VR Chat yesterday and I had some pretty, pretty interesting, memorable yeah. moments in that. Yeah. yeah uh, without going too into detail, <laughs> there was some weird stuff going on in some of the private rooms. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys, you guys give your answers. I think Second Life is a good one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Of all course. the all the true characters are still playing Second Life. Yeah, I was trying to make a funny video with that with Leah, mm -hmm. and what's it's like it's innavigatable. It's so like unintuitive. Second Life is so old. It's so hard to like find yeah. what you're supposed to do, yeah, how to course. get to the funny stuff. But there was just like this woman. She was just talking. She was just talking to no one in a different language, and there was a guy there listening to her and going, "Yeah." Yeah, shut up. And this was going on for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think the woman could even hear him. She was just rambling on and on, and the guy was just mad. He was just standing next to her, yelling and saying, Okay, okay, shut up. Okay, shut up. That's pretty and, good. Yeah. That was like a nightmare. It was like walking into a nightmare. <laughs> so many uh, classic ones, though. Yeah, I feel like I've had a lot of video game experiences that are fun. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I can't really think of one. I played um, Minecraft a lot when I was like 13. Nice. Yeah. And I was a griefer at the time. I enjoyed oh, griefing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So it's one of those old, you know, you go to the server and you're like, oh, I'm from Planet Minecraft. I want to review your server. Give me your admin. Dude. And then they did. <laughs> Okay. And I like fucking lava blocked everything. Wow! <laughs> like I you turned everything around. Really like yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I was actually awful. That's why I played video games for just to be evil. 
like when I was younger. <laughs> like oh, I played Jailbreak and I was like the warden. I was like the worst warden ever. I was just I would kill every prisoner for no reason. I was just really strict. <laughs> oh, man. I was so just oh, I was can. just an asshole. Yeah, just because I could. It was like a total power trip. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a 13 year old friendly. It's like, yes, I have power over people. I could destroy an entire server. <laughs> that's yeah, like, you know, Red Dead Online or like GTA Online. That, that's yeah. all it, it, it yeah. like, d- devolves into. It's right. just like people like tying you up and like throwing you off a cliff and <laughs> exactly. firing Except missiles I'm not at that you. good at those games anymore. Like, I, like, when you're 13, you have so much time to kill that you can get that good to where you can yeah. destroy other people. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like logging on to Red Dead after work, and it's like these people just destroy me because I don't have a yeah. chance. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's very <laughs> I, I sad. Was so I can't much get better back at to video that. games when I had nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah. it's really no sad. Responsibilities. You know, <laughs> yeah, that person is just way better at the game than I am. My gaming no channel is not my main gig. <laughs> I can only play once a week. <laughs> We're not all like Donkey and make we can make the big bucks playing video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I've mastered Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> you could defend against 13 year old probably. Yeah. Well, they have all I kinds would, of protections I, I would now just choose that. not to make him the admin. Yeah. You wouldn't <laughs> yeah. be stupid enough to do it. They kind of deserved it, honestly. You taught Why? them a valuable lesson. They'll never trust anyone ever again. <laughs> Good. They shouldn't. <laughs> I was in the Halo Reach beta when that was a thing. And yes, uh, me and my friend would join a team game and then trap one of our teammates in a corner <laughs> just by, <laughs> by blocking them in. Yeah. And yeah, then they would have to kill us. Really and, then, and then after they killed us, we would boot them from the game because they betrayed us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a really dick thing to do. But it was, fun. Yeah. I mean, it was It was like at the end of the beta. I was like, oh, whatever. What are you going to do, ban me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. I think the new, the new Call of Duty actually brought back a uh, good feature. Or if you kill somebody, you can hear the other team. You, if you kill somebody on the other team, you can briefly hear their voice chat for a while. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So you just shoot them and go, fuck, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That is, That's yeah, great. That's, funny. That's pretty satisfying. <laughs> I'm surprised people don't use game chat in the same way they used to. I, no. I remember in the 360 era, like, everyone was just, yeah. you know, griefing each other and, and like, calling each other, you know, rude words and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why. I think, I think they were just fasc- afraid. They were fascinated by it back then. Now they're just now. Now it's normal. It's the like, wild yeah, west of the internet. Me. Some people still do use it though. Yeah, like a good Second Life game. <laughs> Second Life. <laughs> you should check that one out. <laughs> totally. All right. Uh, thank you for all your questions, everybody. Uh, I believe we have a recommendation for the film for next episode. And it is mm-hmm. Alex because I sniped his recommendation before, so it goes back to him before it gets back to me yeah. again. Yeah. So I'm gonna be a bit of a crowd pleaser for the fans for this one. <gasps> um if you remember earlier in performance, there was a character who slicked his hair back with like red blood or whatever the fuck, and he put the sunglasses on and looked a bit like a Smith agent from mm. the Matrix trilogy. Um which uh is my recommendation for Next yeah. episode, we're doing it. The trilogy. <laughs> we can finally the do The trilogy, it. yeah, if that's okay. Very cool. No, that's good. Yeah? You think you'll yeah. have enough time can to watch Can we play? The... Totally, I'll have enough time. Okay, but there's, great. like, the animated stuff, too. I want to I include that's that. that's canon. You guys haven't seen yeah, the yeah, animated. Can... I and haven't you guys seen have to do the uh, Matrix Online MMO. Cause that yeah, I was going to say. That story. I want to oh, play that MMO. game. And there's another one that came out on Xbox that apparently is like broken. You can't get past the second level because the door yeah. is open. But they filmed like <laughs> so actual I'd like scenes, to play that one. Funny. I played yeah. that a long time ago. For an but unplayable yeah, game. Not, yeah, I played it once 10 years ago. But... <laughs> there's also an al- alternate ending in the Path of Neo game. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll play that one too. Yeah, I never played that one. <laughs> Path of Neo. So yeah, the three Matrix movies and the Animatrix is what we're covering. Mm-hmm. Then. Cool. And it's yeah. the twentieth so anniversary so. of the Matrix. They're remaking it. Are they? I think it's like a, sequel, it's a sequel, isn't it? Whatever. Yeah, I think it's like Matrix Four. Oh, it'll be the same Keanu movie anyway. again. It'll be a soft reboot with Keanu yeah. Reeves. Yeah. It'll be the Force Awakens of the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Exactly. Who it'll be the knows? same thing. I saw that new Terminator movie. It's the same shit. Soft reboot, except. Arnold was in it, and Sarah Connor was in it. Yeah, and you loved it. Is it gonna be yeah. the the Wachowskis? One of them signed on, apparently. If they're if they're in control at all, it's gonna be it's gonna be the most insane bullshit possible. Yeah, 
Jupiter Ascending was hilarious. <laughs> so if it's anything <laughs> like that, I'll film. enjoy it. I do enjoy that they have a lot of creative freedom with their stuff. Like Cloud Atlas, say whatever you want about it. It does feel like an ambitious like mm-hmm. vision. Uh huh. Like yeah. it's not like this uninspired drivel like Terminator yeah, or trying. Star Wars. They're not yeah. gonna do a reboot. <laughs> I hope they don't. They they do something really different with it. I'd hope. Yeah. Who knows. I'll watch it. They'll do like a Star Trek where you went into an alternate timeline or something. They go into the oh, Path yes. of Neo timeline. <laughs> they go into it's, all, it's like <laughs> Xbox graphics. They go into the MMA, yeah. What is this? <laughs> all right. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening and or watching to this episode of Sardonicast. If you want to support the show, $2 a month, sardonicast.com. Sign up for premium. You'll get these episodes early. Also, patreon.com slash sardonicast will do the same thing. Also, we got merch. Christmas is coming. What are you going to get? Gifted? What are you going to get for your grandma? You got to get her a Sardonicast t shirt or some shit, or else she's going to be sad. This is a Larry mm-hmm. King special report telling you that you need <laughs> Sardonicast merch for your grandma, or else she's going to die because Sardonicast merch yeah. has all the correct fish oils in it. It's going to help with her joints. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been injured by the Sardonicus Minch? <laughs> Contact me. Very special thank you to our lovely guest. Thank you so much for coming on. It was a great episode. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, man. thank you for coming on. It was fun. It was really Perfect. Fun. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's it. Bye. Well, do you want to Bye, add everybody. something else or should we say goodbye? <laughs> uh, farewell, everyone. It's okay. been fun. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>